Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Job. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the running gait, where we will be discussing the phases of the gait and then we will see the kinematics, that is what happens at the hip, knee and ankle. Next video, we will be talking about the muscle activity and finish the running gait topic. Okay, so starting with the phases, there is again stance phase and a swing phase like the normal gait. But over here, what happens is stance phase is significantly reduced and swing phase is extended. And in the swing phase, the double support time which is there is replaced by float period. That means you are in air during that time. None of your foot will be in contact. So to begin, first there will be heel strike similar to your foot, right? Heel strike after which you will push yourself forward, right? You will push yourself forward, toe off. And then once there is toe off, your both leg will be in the air. That is your float period followed by which there will be this part where your other leg will be in contact with the ground and there will be the same stance phase over here correct and then again this will be followed by a float period correct and then again it will start with the heel strike over here so that's how a whole running gait looks like so the main difference between your normal gait and running gait is the absence of double support period and this is replaced by your float periods which happens because of the increase with speed and what does it mean as your speed keeps increasing the float period will keep increasing that means you will be in air for longer and longer time as your speed keeps increasing and the stance phase over here where you push off the ground that will be done in a very short amount of time so the movement of stance phase that is heel strike and toe off right the pushing part when it is done in a smaller and smaller amount of time that is basically the power that is generated in that much time is even higher right so higher power means you are going faster and float period is more right it is stretched out over here so that's what happens in your running gait next your grf ground reaction force at your center of pressure that means when you're putting the foot on the ground there will be a center of pressure right and the ground reaction force will be passing through that this ground reaction force will increase by 250 percent of your body weight and also because there is so much force at the knee joint when the forces are traveling the patellofemoral stresses that are created at the knee joint or the forces at the patellofemoral joint will also be way more than your normal gait that occurs in walking right another major difference that will be seen in running gait is basically both of your feet will fall in the same line that means when you are walking what happens normally your this feet will be over here and the other one over here right so it does not fall in the same line but in running it will be something like this there will be slight adduction right adduction and then you will be running with both your feet in the same line right while running what does this do this will significantly reduce your base of support right so that's what i mentioned here the, when your feet will fall in the same line of progression the base of support will be significantly reduced and to improve this base of support your legs will have increased functional limb varus that means the varus that is seen at the point of con contact at the ground will be increased by around 5 degrees and this will help you improve your balance so overall in the running gait the range of motion at each joint will be increased the muscle activation will be increased your base of support will be reduced and more force will be generated at each joint which will help you reduce your stance phase and increase the float period so you can travel or go ahead with a higher velocity now let's move on to the kinematics of the running gait in kinematics at the hip joint what do we see we see that there is around 45 degree of hip flexion during the heel strike okay around 45 degree which 
will be followed by 20 degree of extension after the toe off that means from here as you go and push yourself right when you are pushing yourself there will be around 20 degree of hip extension when your toe off is happening that is you are pushing off the ground this will be followed by what your swing phase correct your toe heel strike is done toe off is done after which you will move on to the swing phase where you will swing your hip again ahead so that you can go again for the stance phase right and during swing phase there will be around 60 degree of hip flexion over here right over here flexion of 60 degree during late swing that is your swing phase is almost over and from 60 degree it goes back to 40 to 45 degree correct so from late swing phase what will come the swing phase is over heel strike will come over here again and heel strike how much did we see 45 degrees so that's what late swing goes to again back to 40 to 45 45 to 50 degree to prepare for the next heel strike correct and then again heel strike will happen so 45 degree of heel strike which goes to 20 degree of hip extension during the toe off right 45 20 then here all the way to 50 to 60 degree of hip flexion during swing phase and then it will be followed by again 45 degree of hip flexion for the heel strike right simple right then going on to the knee what happens at the knee at the knee there will be first 20 to 40 degree of knee flexion at the heel strike right at the heel strike there will be some amount of flexion at the knee which will help you in absorbing the forces right if it's totally straight then forces will straight run up and it can damage the joints so there will be some amount of flexion at the knee joint which will help in force absorption and this can go up to 60 degrees as you go ahead which is called as the loading response right now from 60 degree it will go to 40 degree of extension that is basically as your leg goes behind during the toe off part from 60 degree it will go to around 40 degree again of extension that means around 20 degree of extension will occur at the toe off and this will be followed by your flexion because after your stance phase after after you reach here there will be swing phase right and for swing phase you need to bend your knee so this will be followed by flexion and flexion of how much 125 to 130 degree during the mid swing and then finally from mid swing again you have to come back to the heel strike correct from the mid swing again you have to come back to swing so that is during swing phase around 40 degree of extension will be seen at the late late stance correct so that it can prepare for the next heel strike so that was about the knee if you have noticed it always comes back to the same thing that it has to prepare for the next heel strike so it always comes back to the range that it had started with so over here it was 45 degree of flexion of hip which again comes to 45 degree of flexion again here knee 40 degree of flexion came back to 40 degree of flexion so over here i mentioned extension because from flexion it goes to extension but it is again 40 degree of flexion at the knee joint right so next is the ankle ankle starts with 10 degrees of dorsiflexion right during the heel strike which will then progress to rapid dorsiflexion of 25 to 30 degrees so over here from 10 degree first it goes to 25 to 30 degree right and then this will be followed by immediate plantar flexion of 25 degree that is when you are pushing off from the ground at the toe off there will be 25 to 30 degree of plantar flexion which will be then followed by your whole swing phase and then again it has to prepare for the next heel strike so again 10 degrees of dorsiflexion will be seen at the ankle joint so now that we have understood the kinematics that is the angles that are achieved by the joints let's quickly summarize this whole topic and finish off so what did we see in running gait we saw that stance phase is significantly reduced and swing phase is increased here the double support time which was there is replaced by your float period correct where your both feet are in air and stance phase is also significantly reduced which means your body is generating that power in that short amount of time which helps you travel more distance in a higher velocity 
so during that small time the ground reaction force will also be increased by 250% of body weight because that large amount of force has to be generated in a small amount of time correct apart from that your base of support is also reduced muscle activity is improved and also range of motion is also higher talking about the range of motion at your hip joint you start with 45 degree of flexion which goes to 20 degree of extension and then during the late swing again you go to around 60 degree of flexion at the hip joint which will end with again 45 degree of flexion at the heel strike so 45 at heel strike then 20 at toe off then it goes to 60 till here and then again comes to 45 for heel strike correct at knee what happens it is around 20 to 40 at heel strike then goes to 60 and from 60 it goes to around 40 degrees for toe off after which during the swing phase the flexion of the knee will be seen which will be going up to 125 to 130 degree here and then come back to 40 degree of the heel strike here and at the ankle 10 degrees of dorsiflexion which will go up to 25 to 30 degree of rapid dorsiflexion which will be followed by immediate plantar flexion to push off from the ground that is around 25 degree and this will then finally go on to your dorsiflexion of 10 degree at heel strike so with that we finish off this topic next video will be about the muscle activity that is seen in running gait so that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video